Hi everybody, this is Matt Powers, and today we're going to talk about how to build Spark jar files with SBT. So pretty much anytime you want to take an SBT project, package it up, and then run it in your production environment, whether that's on a JetBricks cluster, whether it's with a Spark uh, submit job, you need to package it up as a jar file so you can uh, so you can run it. So SBT provides two two main commands to package up the uh, your project code into a jar file, and they're package and assembly. Package is used to build normal or thin jar files, and assembly is used to build these uh, fat jar files. So let's uh, let's look at what is a jar file from a conceptual perspective. Then we can kind of dig into how to build the thin jar files. Uh, then we can look at building fat jar files, and I'll give you some some tips on how to make your life a little easier. I've uh, definitely had my share of fighting with SBT to, to make my jar files uh, work, and now I kind of finally understand it. Uh, so what is a jar file? Uh, jar is a file type. It stands for Java Archive, or Archive. And basically what it is, is it's just a zip file with all of your project files. So it creates a single file, uh, and that way it's, your project is going to be a variety of Scala files. And then you package it up as a jar file, and then that single file can be passed around and attached to clusters and stuff like that. So it's kind of a convenient way of packaging multiple, jar fi uh, multiple Scala project files. Uh, so let's dive into how to build a thin jar file first. And uh, let's look at the Spark Daria project uh, for an example of that. So if we look at Spark Daria, this is the uh, build.spt file. And here we can see we have a few dependencies. We have Spark SQL. So Spark Daria only depends on Spark SQL. We have this org Apache commons text. We have uh, Spark fast tests. We have micro tests, and that's it. So we got four dependencies listed out here. And when you're looking at the library dependencies of a project, you need to look at the last argument here and really interpret that and, and understand what that means and how that means when you are running SPT package or SPT assembly. So. With SPT package, you're not going to be including any of the dependency uh, files in your package jar, so it doesn't really matter if, if you're using this provided or test, but I'll, I'll still explain it. So provided basically gives the message that your runtime environment should include this dependency and it should not be included in the package jar file. So here we're saying is that... Um, Spark and this org uh, Apache Commons Commons text, those should be included by our, by your runtime environment for people that use the Spark Daria library. And when the Spark Daria library is packaged, those should not be included. Um, okay, and now we see here uh, we have two test dependencies. And test dependencies, I mean, we need the, the, these dependencies, these libraries, to run the test suite. But we don't need them to run the production code. So they shouldn't be included in the package jar file. We don't need to, you know, when we, when we package up a jar file, it's just the code that's meant to be run in production. It's not, the, you know, you don't run the test suite when you have a jar file. So these, any test dependencies are not included in the jar file either. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let me go to Spark Daria. I should have set this up. All right, so let's make this a little bigger. All right, so I'm gonna run the SBT clean command. So basically what SBT clean is gonna do is delete everything that's currently in my target directory. Uh, remember the target directory is where jar files are written out. So, uh, yeah, I think that's about that. Um, as I'm sure you all know, this this stuff takes a while to run in uh, <laughs> SBT. All right, so let's run SBT package. 
and SBT package is going to build my thin jar file for this Spark Daria project. Um, so uh, again, what it's going to do, a uh, thin jar file, it doesn't include any of the project dependencies. So none of the project dependencies are going to be included in the jar file. It's just going to package up the, the code of the project itself. So if we look at Spark Daria, uh, we look at the code itself. It has this column extension, custom transformations, data frame, column absence. It has these variety of Scala files. And all of these Scala files are what are going to be packaged into that zip file, which is called the jar file. Um, all right, so we package that up, and SVC is saying, OK, I put that jar file for you in target, Scala 2.11, Spark Daria 2.11-230, underscore 0, 0.19.0. OK, great. So we can see that our jar, jar file uh, is following some pretty specific naming conventions. Um, basically, we have the project name, underscore, followed by the Scala version, hyphen, uh, followed by the Spark version, underscore, followed by the project version. So here, this is Spark Daria 0, 0.19.0. 0. We're using Scala 2.11, and we're using Spark 2.3.0. I found that using these naming conventions uh, make it a lot easier for jar file consumers to know which, which jar file they should select when using your library. Um, you're going to be building, hopefully you'll be building libraries with different uh, Spark versions to accommodate a variety of users. All right. So anyways, let's inspect the contents of this uh, jar file. So the command to do that is jar tvf uh, target scala, and then you just kind of add the path to the jar file itself. So you run that. And you can kind of see, OK, so what's being included uh, here? We have this manifest file, fine. Um, and then here are all the directories of the code. Those are 0. File size is 0. And then here's all the code itself. So we're including this data frame helpers class. Uh, we're including column extensions, transformations. Uh, these are all the project files that are included in Spark Daria. Uh, and then when we run SPT package, included in that jar file. All right, great. So let's get back to, so let's again show you where this is located. So if we look at Spark Daria, target, Scala 2.11, uh, that's where the uh, jar file is outputted in the target Scala-2.11 uh, directory. So, um, one thing I wanted to just highlight, if we look in the Spark Daria build.sbt file, we can see that we're using this code right here. And this is artifact name, colon equals, and then a bunch of stuff that's hardly readable. Um, so basically, that's how we are customizing our jar file name when the sbt package command is run. Uh, if you use SBT assembly to build fat jar files, there's different, <laughs> some different SBT code you need to add to customize that. Uh, if you ever need to, uh, Spark style guide. If you ever need to reference how to, uh, you know, grab that code, you can go to the Spark style guide. You can go to jar files, and it shows kind of the best practices for naming your jar files, uh, the code you can use to customize those jar file names with SBT assembly, and also the code you need to uh, customize those jar file names with SBT package. OK, so that was a mouthful. But we are just getting started. So we just talked about how to build a thin jar file with SBT package. Uh, now. We're going to move on to building a fat jar file with SBT assembly. So, SBT assembly um, is a separate plugin uh, that's that's technically separate from SBT. So, you need to add it to your project in order to 
to be able to access the SBT assembly command. And SBT assembly is for you know deploying fat jar files, for building fat jar files. So let's look at another project. This is the Spark Slack open source project. And let's look at SBT using SBT assembly to build a fat jar file. So in this case, uh, Spark Slack is depending on this net gpedro integrations Slack, Slack, Slack webhook library. And it's also depending on org JSON 4S. Uh, so from a test perspective, it's depending on Spark Daria, uh, SparkFast, and SparkFast tests. So uh, and Scala tests. So in, in the Spark Daria project, the test framework is MicroTest. In this project, the test framework is Scala test. So these three test dependencies are only needed in the test environment, and test files are not packaged in jar files. So we don't need test dependencies or test file, you know, or jar, jar files in uh, in those packaged uh, jar files. Okay, so. What we can see here is that these dependencies listed here don't have test or provided uh, at the end. So that means that when we run, so that means that these are true project dependencies that should be distributed with the project in the jar file. So when SBT assembly is run and the jar file is built, the, these are going to be included in the jar file. So these projects have a bunch of files and th those files are going to be included in our jar file uh, as well as our project code. So let's take a look at that. Um, so if this is Spark Slack, SBT clean. So we're going to run SBT clean to delete everything that's currently in the target directory. Uh, one thing that will kind of mess you up with jar files is um, let's say a jar file exists and you try to build a new one with the same name it's actually not going to over it's not going to overwrite that existing jar file so, so just watch out for that because that might trip you up at some point um, all right so we've added the uh, SBT assembly plugin to this project so we can just go ahead here and run SBT assembly uh, generate the jar file and then we're going to use the jar tvf command to inspect the contents of that jar file. Uh, similar to how we did with uh, when we generated the Spark Daria jar file with SBT package. Uh, yep, so we can kind of see that it's a lot of dependencies are being res uh, resolved there. And th this SBT assembly command is doing more work than, than our SBT package command did. Uh, so we can see it's including Slack webhook, JSON4S. It's uh, running the test suite. That's another thing that SBT assembly does. Um, and then it builds out that jar file. Great. So we can see we have that jar file being outputted to target. Uh, Scala 211, Spark Slack, 211, 230, 001. So we're using the same naming convention as before. We're taking the Scala version, uh, hyphen, and then we're taking the Spark version, underscore, and then the project version. So in this, we're using Scala 211. Spark 2.3.0, and this project version is 0.0.1. All right, cool. So let's uh, inspect the contents of this jar file. So jar tbf target uh, Scala Spark. Uh, wow. OK, so that was a lot more stuff. Uh, I don't even think that's going to fit here, so I'm going to need to pipe this to less. Um, all right, so here we can see we are including uh, all of my code that I wrote here. So we're including all of the Spark Slack code. Here we can see we're including some Google code. Okay, that's weird. I'm not sure where that came from. We'll need to dig into that a little bit. 
Here we're including some ThoughtWorks code, this Paranamer, Paranamer. Uh, not sure where that came from. Okay, here we have NetGPedro. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, this GPedro library was, uh, uh, I'm trying to fight off a sneeze right now, guys. Uh, I think I successfully did it. All right, perfect. So the NetGPedro stuff, well, that's kind of expected. We, uh, we wanted that to be included in our jar file. Uh, same with this or JSON for S. Uh, we wanted we you know we specifically said we wanted that to be included in our fat jar file. Uh, cool. So let's look into that and see why why did we end up getting this this Google and ThoughtWork library here? Uh, so if you look at the the POM file, uh, so this is of this uh, G Pedro library. Uh, I really like his cool like ninja emoji. Um, so we can, so POM files are kind of how you specify dependencies for Java projects, I believe. Uh, so if we look here, we can see, okay, this guy has a dependency on this Google code JSON stuff. So that's why we can see we have JSON, JSON here. So uh, kind of the lesson is when you depend on another library, you get all of that library's code in your, in your jar file, but you also get the dependencies that that library depends on in your code. Uh, and that, keep going, keep, that keeps going down until infinity. So we can see that that can unfortunately quickly lead us into this uh, state of dependency hell. So dependency hell is when you have version conflicts and it's just a terrible time resolving it. And you know you can really face this pretty easily with Spark and Scala. There's a lot of dependencies. So you're going to want to be very careful about what libraries you add to your, to your project. And when you add a library, you're going to want to make sure that they have very few dependencies because remember when, when you add a library their dependencies become your dependencies quickly. Um, all right so there's a few other things to talk about with fat jar files. Uh, I know that this has been a lot everybody. <laughs> I know it's been a lot and I know you all want it to end. Um, all right so let's take a look here. Uh, we have this line of code here which basically says do not include Scala in our jar file. And what by Scala, I mean Scala, the programming language itself. We don't need, you know, we're saying we were going to include Scala in our runtime environment. We don't need it in our jar file. Uh, and then this down here is how to customize the jar file name uh, when, when SBT assemblies run. So. We, we looked at it, there's different syntax for customizing jar files that are built by SBT package. This is the syntax for customizing jar files that are made by SBT assembly. All right, so let's see if there's anything else I forgot to cover. Um, yeah, I think that that's about it. Uh, so your Spark runtime environment should pretty much always include the Spark and Scala uh, dependencies. And this is a difficult topic. Uh, you might have to read this blog post a couple times and, and watch the video a couple times, but uh, I hope I've fought through most of the hard stuff and you guys can just kind of copy these best practices and have less uh, of a painful experience doing this stuff than, than I did. Uh, thank you, have a great day.